Next up is Eye in the Sky. We're going to hear from Helen Mirren and the late Alan Rickman after this clip. Today, you will be flying a joint operation over Nairobi, Kenya, codenamed Operation Egret. Horn of Africa, Somalia, Kenya, Nairobi. We have intelligence of a meeting of key members of Al-Shabaab in the suburb of Parklands, in this house, here. It belongs to a man named Shahid Ahmed. He's an Al-Shabaab facilitator. Due to visit this house is this man, Abdullah Al-Hadi. He's a Somali and his wife, Aisha Al-Hadi, formerly Susan Helen Danford, British national. Troubled childhood, converted at 15. She was radicalized in a West London mosque where she, she met and married Al-Hadi. Intelligence has them connected to the most recent suicide bombing in Kenya. They are numbers four and five on our East Africa Most Wanted list. We've been tracking them for six years. Their cell executed one of our Kenyan agents yesterday. Now we have information that they will be in Nairobi today using that Parklands house as a transit point for two new recruits. Mohammed Abdisalam, American. The CIA have him connected to extremists in Minnesota. And Rashid Hamoud is British. Once all suspects are in the house, Kenyan special forces will launch a cordon and search. This is an operation to capture, not kill. Your job is to be their eye in the sky. I guess ambiguous, yes, in the sense that it doesn't make any decisions for you. It throws up all the questions. It's not morally ambiguous in the sense that it's sort of immoral, but it's not, but it's pretending it's not or something. It is, it, it takes no decisions for you. It's just uh, always a relief in a way to get a script which is about the world that we all live in and is completely current in its issues and the characters that inhabit it. So, you know, you're looking at your own life as well as other people's. Yes, well, she's the one having to make the decision. She's the one having to, everybody else, a and obviously the drone pilot himself, or the, or the two of them, um, they are the ones having to literally do the thing. Everybody else is a situation of, of sort of being able to discuss it. And the clock is ticking. There is no time for discussion. He is definitely a human being at kind of either end of the story. You, ca you get a, s a small sense of a personal life. Um, above and beyond that, I mean, the, the central issue in the film is something about which he has very clear, a very clear notion of, you know, how to control and how to respond to. Helen Mirren and the late Alan Rickman talking about drawn drama, Eye in the Sky. What's it all about, Ryan? Well, we'll tell you. So this is the last, <laughs> the last film that Alan Rickman did. Sadly, that's all I need to know. Just tell us what it's yeah, about. Yeah, but um, yeah, it, it obviously um, massive shame that he, he it did, is. he did it pass really on. Was, but yeah. um, in, in Iron the Sky, hopefully this is a good send off for him. Basically, Iron the Sky is uh, directed by Gavin Hood, who's had a bit of a weird directorial career. Um, he did um, Totsy, otherwise known as Thug. He did um, X Men Origins Wolverine. Mm. He did Ender's Game. That I don't know if it was a flop. I mean, it, it didn't really go down as well as people were hoped. And I was back with Iron the Sky, which is basically Helen Mirren as a Colonel Catherine Powell, who's a UK-based military officer who's in command of a top-secret drone operation to capture terrorists in Kenya who might be dispersing as, as, as soon as possible uh, through their remote surveillance of drones and on some on-the-ground intel through agents based in Kenya. They basically discover that the targets are planning a suicide bombing and the, the mission escalates from capturing the targets to outright killing the targets. And through the, the lens of American pilot Steve Watts, Aaron Paul and his a missionary who um, um well his, his help by play um played by um Phoebe Fox who basically they, they are on the trigger with the, the drone so they have the command of the and I am um, the people in the boardroom as well including Alan Rickman who's you know the lieutenant of the operation and uh very much basically going around to what the decision they're going to make and how they're going to go from there and you know just because I mean the main dispute around this is the fact that there is a, a nine-year-old girl Mm -hmm. in the in the in the area that they are going to fire the drone and basically it's very much around the moralistic tendencies of that and whether you know there'll be an international dispute if they trigger that and basically bring them in the u.s and the, the moral political and the personal stance of the modern warfare that is involved with that it's a very 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 tense film yeah. now the, it, it's I, I was expecting less action than like uh, than what i was expecting in, at first when i saw the trailer because i mean you, you would expect from something like this to be i mean like good kill 
mm-hmm. last year is, is a similar film in terms of themes and in general story as well another drone pilot played by Ethan Hawke and uh, it's very similar to this in, in some of the ways it's, things it does but in, in this you've got very very high stakes warfare played out in boardrooms and played out in, in, in government offices rather than being played on the ground I mean you do have some some of the uh, missionaries on the ground you've got um, Abarkar Abdi who's play, one, play one of the agents who's in Kenya right there he's he, he's very much in behind enemy lines he uses a little bug drone to spy directly on the terrorists in the building so you get angles from all directions and you've got obviously the eye in the sky which is being controlled so you get the, the top down view which is very much like you know a, a, a view of the entire complex and you get to see all of the, the back and forths between these government officials and and, and um, Helen Mirren's character is, is, is superb in the, in the way that she's sort of constantly frustrated constantly being stopped by bureaucracy essentially as she's been stopped by the prime minister and the fact that they have to report a usa at points and just the very people getting involved and everyone is getting extremely frustrated as it goes on and as i say there is a lot less action than i was expecting i mean i wasn't expecting too much as i say but there is a lot less than i was expecting because it is very much based in these courtrooms lots of discussions going on lots of high tense high intensity angry very very vitriolic things that are going on between these characters and they all work off superbly I and mean, it is an incredibly talented cast uh, Aaron Paul on the button as the, as the drone pilot the, drone, the one who fires the drone is really good he's very much on the edge because he is the one who pulls the trigger the the boardroom featuring Alan Vickman and Helen Mirren is full of you know proper established talent and they work all really well together and it's just it's consistently tense all the way through i mean it is on for nearly two hours about an hour 40 about uh, an hour 45 it's, like, it's close to an hour and a half than two hours oh, it's about an hour 40 isn't it? i mean yeah yeah about, about, split hairs yeah yeah but about an hour 40 but um it, it, it it's it, it it spends none of that time with with, with fat of the story it, it's all very focused it's all ratcheting up the tension slowly and slowly reaching that flash point of do they fire the missile and and potentially kill this girl and it's very much a slow burn and it works in that way because you get to see all these established actors work really well Alan Vickman in, potenti- in particular gets a really good send off because he's got some absolutely terrific scenes near the end where he completely shines and just blows the rest of the cast away he's superb and that's and I really think Helen Mirren centers the story very well in with her sort of well just a essential joy to Viva you know it's, it's a it's a style really she, with all that experience that she has I really enjoyed it and it's it, it has you on the edge of your seat yes I am of the same opinion a very very tense it very human like that's that's the yeah. thing it, it, it paints the entire situation from a human angle like rather than what we see in the news which is obviously very uh, glorified and dehumanized you could say um we you know the the uh, the, the health secretary the, the uh, minister of just uh, defense yeah minister of defense um he has got like a stomach problem he's got food poisoning and we kind of see him having to deal with this situation from the toilet uh-huh. um showing that these kind of things are not just things that happen in boardrooms they are things that are you know, happening all the time, things that need to be dealt with, you know, like regardless of the circumstance. And you really feel, you really feel for politicians, which yeah. is something I never ever thought I would have to do. You, you kind of, the entire film is spent kind of questioning their decisions, then you kind of question yourself. And for me, that's one of the most interesting. It things feels like you... a bit of a chessboard because, like, it, as the energy yeah. of the characters keeps getting played around each other, they bounce off each other, and it's all very tense because they're all relying on each other to do a certain thing, and they can't fire until they get all of these reports and different uh, different philosophical decisions that they get back. And it is it, it's constantly leaving you on the edge of what's going to happen. Are they going to finally do it? And all this while, the the suicide bombers are, are preparing to leave and to. to, to, to burst into the wilderness so it's it's all very much on a time limit as well and you really really get the sense of I mean, the proper sweat as you're watching it and it, they really sell that really well i mean mm-hmm. it's it is pointing that alan rickman gets one of the final words on the film because he, he sells it perfectly well and i think having such an established cast like this allows the film to really breathe and really muse on the philosophical tendencies that it has and to really get the tension over and just just how intense this is and you know it, do you want to risk the life of this nine-year-old child to to, to potentially save many you know it's morally complex, and and, and thankfully it's not Islamophobic. No, no something, yeah, it's something like very far um, from Islamophobic. London has fallen, very much was. Um, this, you know, different tre- beasts entirely, though. Well, in, you know, they're, they're both very current issues that we face at the minute. They're, they're, they're films of our time that kind of sum up the problems that we may or may not have. Um, and and this tackles barely this, a gunfire. This tackles in this them film. in an interesting, thought-provoking, and you know, s- you know, much nicer way than something yeah. like London Fall, which is just horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Eye in the Sky is in cinemas now and it is def- Absolutely definitely recommend, a recommend. Yeah. Uh, we-